Okay, I'm ready to uh, mix the primer. I'm using uh, Nason, I guess that's how you say it. Uh, it's a DuPont product. Um, it's the cheaper version of DuPont. Actually, I think DuPont's been bought out. I'm not sure. They got a weird name, I think, now. But this is what I got because it's a little cheaper than the DuPont brand. Uh, but it is DuPont. So anyway, um, we're going to do uh, one part primer and then one part uh, reducer or activator. And uh, I'm going to mix it up in these little cups. Probably going to mix up a real small amount, maybe four ounces of paint. Got a little strainer to uh, make sure nothing gets in the gun. And uh, this paint's expensive, so I'm going to mix up as minimal amount as I can. I don't have a whole lot to prime, so four ounces should be, should be good. This stuff is not cheap. So you don't want to go and be wasting a bunch of it. You're going to want to stir up your paint real good. Paint or primer, you want to stir it up real good so you get all the chemicals mixed together. Okay, once you get it all stirred up, time to uh, pour it in here. Like I said, I'm just going to mix up a real small amount, uh, probably four ounces of paint right now. Um, so that's uh, two ounces of primer and that's uh, two ounces of the uh, activator. Never let your paint uh, never leave it without the lid for very long. Seal it up. So you got a little bit over two ounces there. So Now you want to mix it up. You want to mix it up real good. Now it's ready to go in the gun. Well, oh, four ounces is what this gun holds, so it's perfect amount to mix up.
this is just a cheap, just a cheap small gun that I use. I use it a lot. I like to get a nice small, uh, high volume, low pressure gun, but just haven't spent the money yet. Now I'm going to go wipe down my thing and I'll be ready to spray. Okay, I'm going to uh, start putting the primer down. I'm going to put one coat down and I'll let, let it flash for uh, 30 minutes. Uh, but I'll put a second coat down and uh, that should be good. I don't really have much to prime here, just a, just a small amount. Okay, I'm going to uh, go take a break, let this uh, flash um, 30 minutes, and uh, put another coat on. I may, may put three coats on this, uh, we'll see. Okay, um, got it all primed. Um, I did put uh, three three coats on here. Uh, I went with three because I'm I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding on it. So uh, three was uh, the number. I and I had the paint. I figured I'd use it. I already mixed it up. Um, I'm going to now sand this with uh, 400 grit sandpaper and uh, just gonna use a block and uh, um, you can't really feel this but this is smooth where it's painted but then this is rough here um, because of the overspray uh, that primer is, is kind of thick so it, it, it leaves a rough texture you know everywhere that I haven't concentrated it so any of the overspray it's rough so I got to smooth all that down um, you know probably don't have to do where I've primed it but there's a few there's something right there it's got to be sanded so I'll hit that um, you know I may I might sand the face of this that feels pretty smooth to me but I might just hit that with 400 grit. Um, 400 grit is the number you need for the paint to be um, smooth. Uh, if you have any more aggressive, like if you sand that with, with 120 and just leave it and then put paint on there, you're going to see every scratch that that uh, sandpaper made. It needs to be 400 grit um, for the paint to, be, to look smooth. So that's what I'm going to do here next is uh, just sand this a little bit with 400 grit and uh, then it'll be, should be ready for color then.
just going to uh, lightly sand this. Uh, not going to get aggressive with it. Because if you get aggressive, then you're going to uh, you're going to go through the the prime, or you just lay down. So it's just uh, it's a light sanding. This 400 gets clogged up pretty fast because it's just uh, it's not it's a pretty fine paper. Okay, it's uh, now it's been sanded with uh, 400 grit sandpaper um, everywhere that it needed to be smoothed out. Um, you know, I use my my fingers and and uh, feel the whole thing. You know, to to feel where it needs to be sanded. Um, I mean, if you can feel it rough, um, you're going to be able to see the roughness. You know, if you can feel a chip or you can feel a scratch um, you're gonna see the scratch because the paint the paint is not that thick um, that's what you use uh, primers and uh, Bondo for is filling that stuff in uh, so the surface is smooth for the paint because the paint is not gonna fill anything in um, it's just gonna make it it worse so you need to take care of all your scratches and, and holes and everything um, at this stage. Um, and with that, um, bugs and stuff, um, hair, um, dirt is really not a big deal up until this point because um, you know you can just sand that stuff out and uh, you know you'll never even know it was there if you do get a piece of hair or bug in it. But uh, now that the paint's going on, pretty much uh, if you get a bug or something or a piece of hair, you're 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 stuck with it in there. Um, because once you start putting the color on, you know you can't sand it down. You know you got to put the color on, let that flash and dry, then you put your clear on. Uh, paint isn't so bad for me. I, I found the clear is the worst. Um, bugs seem to just love to fall in it. Hair, um, dust. It helps maybe to, to wet the floor down a little bit. Keep the dust from, from flying around. But I am now ready to put some color down.